So when I first start sculpting out my character in ZBrush, the first thing I want to do is bring in the low poly geometry, and then I'll increase it up to one or two divisions higher. And then I start to bring in some massing. Uh, massing is simply a way of defining some of the shape and flow of the model that I didn't really put time into the original base mesh. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is make sure that the mesh is going to work properly before I invest any more time in the actual modeling stage. So what I'm looking for is pinching, creasing, and also trying to define the character. It's very much the same process that you normally would with DynaMesh, where you're concepting out a character. Um, however, this is more of a technique that I've been doing uh, long before DynaMesh was around. So uh, personally, I prefer this technique because a lot of times I can actually bring my model down to like a stage two and most of the geometry is usable. And so with just a little bit of modification, I'm able to uh, use that as my retop and just do some minor fixes here and there with the, the edge looping. So what I'm doing right now is just putting in the main structure of the anatomy. I'm not concerned too much about how the character actually looks compared to the concept art initially. I'm just trying to define the general shapes. So moving the geometry like the eye sockets to line up better around the actual eyeballs. Defining the areas such as the nostrils, the nose, the mouth, and so forth. So this process actually goes quite fast, but it does take a little bit of time in ensuring that I have everything proper before I invest uh, the large amount of time in the physical detailing of the sculpture. I'll also go back and forth between higher level and lower level uh, with the move tool. When you're trying to move large areas of mass, it's best to bring everything down to the lowest level so that you're working with just a few of the vertices. So here I'm pulling in the mouth and tightening it up. And then I'll bring the level up higher and start going back in now with my clay tubes uh, with the rounded technique. And I'm just trying to fill in some of the ridge lines in, in the brow. Uh, one, one of the things I like to do is even if I'm not going to uh, need sculpting in a particular area, such as the top of the head, which is eventually going to become hair, uh, I still like to cover all of the area of the mesh with some type of sculpt so that I'm applying texture to the overall geometry. Once I'm happy with the general direction of everything and I feel that I have some basic mass in place, then I'll start to go up to the next level and define a lot more of the detailing. So here I'm working both back and forth with the Alt button where I'm where I'm working both positive and negative, carving in, and then of course filling out. I'm also using the smooth brush quite extensively and one thing that's very important is when you first start working with the smooth Make sure that you adjust the setting and keep it low because the smooth will tend to default at 100% and you don't want to always have 100% smooth all the time because it is going to ruin the detailing that you're putting into the work. You just want to have a very soft hit from time to time when your mesh gets a little chiseled and pixelated. I'll certainly refer back to my original sketch from time to time. Personally, I don't like to bring the sketches into ZBrush. I just ping pong back and forth between Photoshop. And again, I'll use the move tool to really define, make sure that I have the right proportions. So my eyes were way too small for this type of character. He is a very young, energetic type character. So his eyes need to be much wider. What I'll end up doing is creating the eyeballs much bigger and enlarging them uh, so that everything has a bit more of a childish youth appearance to the character.
So that about does it for the massing of the mesh. Next up, I'm going to show you how I use chiseling and polishing to start defining the edges.